Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 248. Fuck, that means we're almost at 250. We should do some kind of special event. Can you start organizing that six months ago? Um, <laughs> oh, a delivery. Oh, uh, for fuck. And we're back. Welcome to the show. Okay, guys, episode 250. Probably nothing's going to happen. We should do something. Maybe some kind of uh, live stream or... I don't know what we'll do. Maybe we'll live stream the podcast from my house here. I don't know. Normally, I would have done a live show every 50 episodes, but obviously that can't happen. So maybe I'll just try and make as money as much money as I can on YouTube. <laughs> Um, guys, welcome to the show. Um, we've got a great one for you. Uh, Gladys Berejiklian just resigned. We just watched it on TV here. We're recording this a few days in advance, so it goes out early for patrons. And, uh, man, I love her press conferences. Like, I reckon that if you timed uh, her from when she walks from the podium to the door running away from journalists asking her simple questions like uh why why did you give your boyfriend that much money i reckon she may have broken the speed of light she's real fast i reckon she's got to be you know say what you want about her corruption say what you like about her response to the pandemic the bitch is fast she can run and i think that's what we need in a premier and i miss her I miss it already. What I really respect in a premier is their 100 meter sprint time. How fast can you run if you're being chased by a journalist? You know, like I reckon, dude, if you really want to see a good race, how about this? Gladys Berejiklian standing right on the start line and then two meters behind her, a current affairs fastest journalist. And we just see if they can catch her with the microphone to ask her why she was throwing uh, dog poo over her neighbor's fence. <laughs> I reckon that would be great. I would watch that. I think we need to invent a whole bunch more events for the next Olympics. You know what I was thinking about as we were swimming? I came up with, I think, the coolest fucking Olympic swim event ever. Okay. Okay. This actually would be really exciting to watch. So races, whatever, cool. Who's fastest? Boring. How about this? You have two swimmers in the same pool. You make you you double the width of a lane. So it's two lanes wide and it's a 50 meter full size pool. Yeah. Is that a full size pool, 50 yeah, meter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> on one end of the pool, right, you have a swimmer, mm. and on the other end of the pool you have a swimmer. And they both dive in at the same time and one of them has to catch the other one on the back of the feet. That's a good idea. So they can't like touch you as you're passing each other. They have to catch your feet yeah. without and you have to touch the wall each time. Yeah. So the race could potentially go for like hours of just... Guys trying to desperately overlap each other for hours and it's like an endurance thing. That sounds like a really toxic squad training session. Yeah, it does. That's what I used to do. Yeah, like <laughs> whoever touches the other person's feet, whoever gets their toes tickled, you're out of the team. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if you're in the pool for six hours or six days. Yeah. If you get tickled, you're off the team. <laughs> I reckon that would be really great because that would probably be the only Olympic swimming event where the lifeguards would really be needed. <laughs> you know? Like I think it'd be like those relay races. Or not the, the marathon runners. Yeah. Like at the end of the line, they all start wobbling and falling over. Imagine that, but you just start going... <laughs> They start drowning and then some like 16 year old has to dive in the pool and rescue some like 120 kilo, six foot three athlete mm. as he starts to drown and holds the kid under to save himself. You know, that would be the best part of the event is not watching the person, whoever wins, but watching how many lifeguards an Olympic athlete can drown trying to save themselves. <laughs> that would be great. It'd be like a real tactical sport, you know? You could be like, oh, can I sit here for 30 seconds and wait while they're up there to recover and then do a bit of a sprint or should I just swim the whole time? That is interesting. Mate, trademark that shit. Um, so, yeah, Glannis has resigned. So I, I don't – I guess John Barillaro is the premier, 
right? Because he's second in command or he's the acting premier, which I guess makes friendly Geordie's uh, acting in front of a firing squad, I suppose. You know, like, dude, the friendly Geordie's video tomorrow is going to be great, uh, especially considering it's going to be his last one ever. So he's got a lot to, to live up to there, you know. Like, you, you want to make your final video a banger, don't you? Like, if John's going to be in charge, you really want to make that last one good. Like, man, Lord forgive his editor if there's a spelling mistake in, his, in Jordan's final video before he gets let off of the firing squad. <laughs> How embarrassing would that be? Like, love Jordan's content, hate to be that guy, but at three minutes in, it's actually Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. <laughs> You forgot the E and the apostrophe, you know? That that would be rough. Um, it is interesting, though. So she's, so the corruption she's been accused of is she gave... I thought initially, right, from, from reading the news, I thought she gave her boyfriend money once. I thought he applied for a grant and then got knocked back and then she told him to have another look at it and then he got the grant, which is just corruption and that's really fucked. I thought she, that was the one time. There's four times she did that with the same guy, from what I understand at least, which is just... I, which goes from being scummy and corrupt to just kind of awesome and sick, you know, where she... Where, where, I don't, I, look, I like to imagine that I'm pretty good in bed, but I've never fucked my, my way into like a few million dollar government grants. You know, like that dude must have been slinging dick. Because how long were they together? Not know. long. Six months? Six months. I don't know. That's Six months. That's and he fucked her so good. I'm taking that as true, by the way. Keelan just guessed. And I'm going, they were only together for six months for sure. We've just confirmed that. Why do I even ask you? I, if I, We've spent so much time together. At this point, if I don't know something, you definitely don't. You know? I can look it up. Yeah, look it up. Yeah, maybe that's why you're here. So, look. But it's kind of been long because they broke up shortly after that. And it was boyfriend, right? So they're not married. She's like of marriage age. Dude, Gladys is out there living a hot girl summer. She's living her hot premier summer where she's just out there trading grants for dick. And you know what? We love a strong independent queen who don't need no standards. In the way she operates her government, but also the dude she's fucking. Have you seen some of these blokes? They look like trolls. Although Gladys isn't that much of a looker. Now that she's not a premier, I will be discussing her looks. She's not the hottest premier out there. Like, I think that her, like her and Daniel Andrews have the opposite problem in terms of how they look, where, where Dan Andrews can't look forwards with both eyes, whereas Gladys can only look forwards, you know? Like the, the eyes on those two are quite polar opposites. Uh, the, the relationship was on and off uh, for a few months here and there from 2015. Bro, on and off? Dude, that's a toxic king. Just slinging dick and then they have a big fight and then she goes, I want you back, baby. And he goes, well, if you want my loving, I need a clubhouse. What, did she, what grants did she give him? I think there was one for a, maybe we should have pulled all of this information up before we started. But the point is, guys, I really like her just giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to some guy who she was sort of dating. <laughs> That's all it takes. If you're a premier, you're like, oh, yeah, he's nice to me sometimes. He can have the government's cash. That's really great. You know what? Independent queen. I can't wait to see people on TikTok calling her a feminist icon. That's going to be sweet. Man, how stoked would you be if you're Daniel Andrews right now? He must be absolutely punching the air right now. Like him and Friendly Geordies are having the same party. You know, they're probably hanging out together on Zoom, just smashing the top shelf. Absolutely. You know, if Daniel Andrews took something from the top shelf because we got our COVID cases to zero, he must be just actually shelving something, seeing Gladys resign. After all the shots they've thrown back and forth at each other, he can now just go, at least I'm not corrupt, bitch. 
They don't say exactly what the grants were for that I can find, but it was $5.5 million for oh, building projects. Facility what projects. the fuck? Five and a half million. That's, that's, I mean, this guy must have a massive cock. Like, I can understand giving five and a half million to your husband because that's effectively going to you as well. All the politicians do that, you know. Everyone, uh, every time they hear a little bit of news, they get their husband to invest in the stock market or their wife to invest in the stock market. That makes, that corruption makes sense to me. But giving five and a half million dollars to a guy that you were seeing on and off for a little bit is real simp vibes. I think Gladys might be a simp. Gladys Berisimplian. And that's not queen behaviour. That's simp behaviour. In other news, Corp's husband (laughs) has uh, had his face revealed, right? They've worked out that Corp's husband, they've worked out who he is. If you don't know, he's an anonymous YouTuber with a really sexy voice. For some reason, people hear his voice and they go, man, this guy's sexy. And he has songs about bondage and fucking e-girls and being a bit of a sex symbol. And everyone draws him to be the sexiest man alive. And everyone fantasizes about this guy to be incredibly sexy. And then his pictures come out and he's like a soft six. And everyone is really upset and shocked that this guy isn't as sexy as they invented him in their own head, as they decided that he would be based on his voice and his cartoon profile picture, right? All of these people made up and imagined that this guy would be an 11 out of 10 and then it turns out he's like a, you know, a chubby soft six and they're angry at him and they're really upset that he's ugly. I'm going to tell you a little secret, a little truth, right, that everyone in the world needs to realize and accept, okay? No one who is anonymous online is hot. There isn't a single anonymous hottie. I have met a lot of anonymous YouTubers. None of them are hot, and none of them will be. Because if you were a really hot person, why would you be anonymous? Literally the only hot people who are anonymous are porn stars. And they might just have a great rig and a busted face. If you're hot, you don't need to be anonymous. You can just show your face. There is a big reason why people are anonymous And sure, some of it's privacy, but I can guarantee you, I'm not saying that everyone who is anonymous is ugly. I'm saying that no one who is anonymous is really hot. Like Madison Beer isn't going to be anonymous. No one who looks like that chick is going to start their career as an anonymous YouTuber. Anyone who is like a nine or a 10 is not hiding their face because why would they? They've got pretty privilege, all right? Exhibit A. I started my career anonymous, all right? So don't come for me and say that I'm being an asshole or I'm body shaming people. I'm talking literally from experience. If you are a 10 out of 10, I'm not talking like if you're an average looking person or if you're kind of good looking. I'm saying that not a single anonymous YouTuber is as hot as you have imagined them to be. It's a fantasy. There's a reason why they're anonymous. And it's because A, privacy, but B, they're not a 10. There's no such thing as an anonymous 10. This happened with Dream. The kid got face revealed and everyone was really angry that he wasn't some fucking 11 out of 10 e-boy or some twink. Turns out, oh, what a surprise. The anonymous Minecraft YouTuber is a bit fat. Oh my God. How shocking. Of course, dude. If you were a 10, you wouldn't hide your face because you're a 10. Actually, I will rephrase that. If you were a 10, you wouldn't have a YouTube account. (laughs) You just would. The only 10s who have YouTube accounts are people 
who used to be ugly and then became really hot, or they blew up on Instagram or TikTok and they were like, well, I guess I should make a million dollars a year out of being hot. I don't, I, I mean, is there a single really, really hot person who started on YouTube? I don't think so. I can't think of anyone. Maybe, maybe that Hassan guy, he started on Twitch. That's actually, no, Twitch, hotties start on Twitch. That's a platform that hotties start on, even girls, especially girls, actually. If you're a 10 and you know how to use a keyboard, jump on Twitch, <laughs> you know? I would say that YouTube's got to be the only platform where no... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I would love to hear examples. If you know any gender, a solid 10, a really hot person, did they start on YouTube? PewDiePie quite an attractive fellow, but I would say that he was not when he started YouTube. He's become hot, I think. You know, me, when I get my new chin, I'll be the first 11 on YouTube. But again, I didn't start it. Can you think of a single hottie, Keelan, who has, who started on YouTube? It's got to be some girls. Ray William Johnson. Anthony Padilla. Anthony Padilla, yeah, but he's hot now. He wasn't. He was. You reckon? For 2012. For 2012, you think so? A 10, though. Okay. I'm talking like like as hot as these people imagine these anonymous YouTubers to be, I don't think... Like I'm talking Madison Beer. Yeah. She's on YouTube because she blew up on TikTok because she's hot. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm always right, man. <laughs> Nick Ocado Avocado. Oh, he was he was hot when he started. Was he? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. No, he wasn't. Oh, sh- Show me a picture. Show, Show me. me a picture of this Nick Ocado can't being hot. <laughs> There's the only time I've seen him hot is when he's vomiting after eating hot sauce. <laughs> he looks real hot. Halfway through a mukbang, that guy is sweating. That guy's very hot. <laughs> Man, that guy has got to be one of the the best, like, dramatic spiral downwards I've seen on YouTube ever. And I haven't even, like, I've never, and I've, I, this is pretty rare for me, I've never watched one of his videos. All I've seen from this guy is, like, little screenshots on Twitter yeah. and then some snippets, some snippets on TikTok. And even I have looked at this cunt and gone, wow, he's going downhill fast. Okay, he's not. He wasn't a hottie when he was skinny, but in comparison, he was a ten. I mean, he kind of looks like, um, you know, what he looks like. He looks like if someone, if someone took, if someone skinned David Dobrik's face and then stuck it on someone else's. That's what he looks like there. <laughs> you know, like someone just killed David Dobrik, cut his face off, and then and just gently laid it over like a face mask. <laughs> That's what he looks like in that image. <laughs> you better put that in the episode because otherwise that joke won't fly. Yeah, I will. Um, that's, yeah, I can't believe how thin he, I got to get on the Nick Ocado diet and then stop three <laughs> months into his YouTube career. Does he put on weight quick? Yeah. He's in a fucking, uh, the last thing I saw, okay. <laughs> so let me tell you my, this is what I've seen of Nick Ocado Avocado. And I remember this because, it's just been like, oh, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, he's doing that now. The first time I saw him, he was just like a gay dude doing YouTube. Mm. And uh, mukbangs. I saw him on Twitter. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. And then he started doing mukbangs. And I was like, oh, that's like a popular thing at the moment because I was looking at mukbangs in general. And I saw, oh, he's doing that now. And then I saw him a few months later and he had clearly put on a lot of weight. And I was like, oh, that mukbang thing's going well for him, obviously. He's kept doing it. And then the next time I saw him, he was obese. And I was like, oh, dude, what is he doing? He can't keep doing this. He's going to kill himself. And then the next time I saw him, he was spreading his ass cheeks apart because uh, he started an OnlyFans. And I was like, oh, well, that's disgusting. Someone just dropped that in the fucking group chat. And you know when oh, you know when you've, your mate who just puts the shit in the group chat? Yeah, I want to see this. You don't. It's actually foul. Because, okay, let's say you're gay and you're into fat men. That's cool. I can respect that. A little bit more cushion for you pushing. All for it. 
wash your ass. <laughs> because that, what I saw was unwashed. Disgusting. And not like, not intentionally unwashed either, which I actually respect more, right? If you're creating fetish content for people who like an unwashed, shitty ass, I can respect that more than accidentally posting a nude with a little bit of shit in your ass. You know? <laughs> Did you see some? <laughs> Killer's dry reaching. Oh, what are you looking at? Show me. No, no, I got rid of it now. I, keep, pull it up. Oh, show me. I want to see it again. Oh, what am I doing to myself? Why are we looking at Nick Ocado's OnlyFans? Keelan's going to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a look. Oh, no, that's what I saw. That's so much worse than I thought. Was this the one you saw? Oh, yuck, that's to stop it. That's enough. That's the oh. star. Oh, yuck. Oh. Wash. <laughs> Have a bath, you fucking animal. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> See, the, that's that's filthy because it's because it's literally filthy. That's disgusting. Oh my god! Now I feel sick. <laughs> so that's the that's the second last time I've seen him, and then the most recent time that I've seen him, he's in a fucking electric wheelchair, saying that he's disabled now. <laughs> What what is the law on that? Is he is he actually disabled? Did he hurt himself, or is he or is he pretending, or is he so fat that he has to use a chair? I think it's that. Did you see the stuff with critical? No, I I, I saw that he was upset about something that that Charlie said. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't really know what happened, but I just saw all these videos on deaf noodles this morning. Oh man, deaf noodles is back, guys. The best journalist in the game has returned, and man, let me tell you, the Spearhead Sunday's podcast is really going to pick up here because whatever Deaf Noodles puts out is like fire content for the podcast. For whatever reason, this guy makes me laugh. Everything that he tweets about, he's like a, he, he says that he's a stand-up comedian and that his internet news channel is satire, but it's like just drama alert written by a guy who definitely can't make eye contact with women. You know, Keemstar can't make eye contact with women, but that's because he's so short that he has to look at their tits and he doesn't want to hurt his neck if he doesn't want to look so far up. This guy just can't make eye contact with him because he's strange. Can you pass me my asthma inhaler? Nick Okada almost fucking killed me. <laughs> it's just there on the table. So, all right, so let's find this um, this critical thing. What is he, what's critical said about the guy? All right, so he's having a, a melt, meltdown here. Thank you. Oh, my God, he's really fat. But he's not so fat that he's disabled. He's standing up here. This is great. This is great. Man, I love Charlie, but the videos, his YouTube channel makes me so angry because the cunt just sits down in front of a webcam in his bedroom and then just does 5 million views. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing and I'm impressed by it, but looking at it makes me go, man, I, you know what it is? It's pure jealousy. I reckon every YouTuber looks at his channel and goes, why the fuck does it work when he does it, but not when I do it? That's like pure just personality. He's just that likable that he really can sit down in a room that has a children's tent in the background and go, yeah, so this is what I think about this that happened today. And then chuck a few jokes in, five million. Good on him. What a legend. 
I want to do their podcast again. Um, okay, so so now he's pretending to be disabled. That's great. I can't wait to see what's next. I wouldn't be surprised if we just wake up one day, check the Deaf Noodles account, and Nick Ocado, uh is like naked on a roof, just losing it. I can't work out how much of that guy is like satire and how much of it is him actually going insane as we watch. That's Real Trisha Paytas vibes. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a character, but then sometimes... I saw this video this morning of him having <laughs> a breakdown in Target because the clothes weren't big enough for him. And he was actually crying? I couldn't tell. But it was very funny. Yeah. I don't know. I guess, you know what? That's like, Trisha Paytas does that where where sometimes she's definitely pretending, but then other times she's like actually having a fucking meltdown and you're like, oh, I feel sorry for her. She's nuts. Um. So yeah, guys, what I'm trying to say is if you think a YouTuber you follow who's anonymous, if you make them up in your head to be really attractive, you should probably think that the truth is closer to them looking like Nick Ocado Avocado. <laughs> like I wouldn't be surprised if we find out that he is Dream, you know? Like I really wouldn't. Um, anyway, guys. Enough bullying people that could be underage. That's the problem with all these underage YouTubers is I don't know how hard I'm allowed to go against them because I don't know how old they are. Could be 40, could be 10. Um, Hobart is so small where we're staying. Tasmania is so fucking tiny. Now, you guys know me. I'm a solitary guy, <laughs> right? I, lo- I love seeing people when I want to, <laughs> you know? I love hanging out with friends. When I know I'm going to hang out with them. Otherwise, love just going on a walk by myself and not seeing anyone. I went for one of those solo walks and I bumped into, this is how small Tasmania is. I bumped into Greeley. I was out for about an hour and a half and I walked all over and I bumped into Greeley three times. Three separate times in three separate places, I just bumped into him. And the first time I bumped into him, about 20 minutes before I said to him on the phone, sorry, man, I'm pretty busy today. I can't hang out. And then we bumped into each other. And I was like, ah, I was just going to the comic book store by myself. <laughs> I have I have nothing on. You know, but I've, I've been, I love Greeley, but I love my friend's when I want to see him, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just like, oh man, I need a day by myself because <clears throat> it was after all the shows. And then I just felt like the rudest cunt three times in a row, bumped into him, had a chat, love Greeley, and then had a chat to the two guys that he was talking to, met them. And then I was like, anyway, man, I'm super busy. And he's like, yeah, 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 I know you told me walk off 30 minutes later. Somewhere else in the city, clearly going nowhere. Bump into him again. And that's when he works out, maybe I wasn't as busy as I said. <laughs> anyway, have a chat, you know, love Greeley. And then I meet the two other people, two different people that he's talking to. And I'm like, anyway, man, I'm, I'm busy. And he's like, well, yeah, I've, I, will, I will act as if I believe that this time. You know those ones where someone's like, someone just lies to your face and you're like, I'm going to pretend I believe that because it's not worth it. And then about half an hour, but then about an hour after that, I bump into him for the third time and then I just had to drop the act. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I'm not busy at all. I just wanted to walk around by myself and do fuck all. And he's like, yeah, I worked that out the second time I saw you. <laughs> That's how small Tazzy is. So look, man, honest, honestly, Good luck to anyone cheating on someone in their in Hobart. You know, you're just gonna you're just gonna bump into them three times. Good luck cheating on your wife if you live in Tasmania, because not only are you probably gonna bump into your wife when you're on a on a date with your mistress, where you bump into her is probably like a family get together. Speaking of cheating on your wives. No, you don't think that's the best way to bring it in? No, you're not, not on board with that one? Okay, let me try something else. <laughs> Speaking of sleeping with a married man, better, better than the other person. It's less bad 
You know, it's still a sad situation. Yeah. How about this? Have you ever been cheated on? <laughs> That's better. That's better. You're the victim. Like you haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. You've just been wrong. <laughs> hey. You- <laughs> Okay, how about this? How about this? Have you ever been cheated on? Maybe it's your fault because you've got hairy balls. You don't like that? I like where this is going. Keep that one. How about if you don't trim your balls with the Manscaped Lawn Mower 4.0, you will be cheated on, I guarantee it. Trim your balls, give yourself the perfect pube makeover with the Lawnmower 4.0. And but not only that, if you if you buy a Lawnmower 4.0 at full price, you will be killed by your wife. So make sure you use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. I use it, never been murdered by my wife. And how do I prove that? By being alive. Use the Lawnmower 4.0 and use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Guys, support the brands that support the way I advertise them because there's not going to be many other brands that are going to be okay with this. So if you like your funny ad reads, get your ball bag razor. It also works on pussies. For all my married lesbian listeners out there, <clears throat> of which I assume there are many. Um, Right. So we're about halfway through. Okay, guys, it's time to talk about how great the house is here. Okay? <laughs> now, you now I know that a lot of people are looking at whenever I snap inside this house, whenever I put up a story, people go, man, Lewis is living in a five-star modern luxury penthouse and I wish I was him. In the most livable city in the country. (laughs) You know how fucked it is that that's actually true? I mean, dude, I got so many angry messages from people in Brisbane when I announced that I was moving to Tasmania. Hey, go outside. Oh, you can't. Are they locked down or did they just get a scare? No, I think uh, Gold Coast, Logan, and Brisbane are. Oh, hey. Told ya. Didn't I say? Tassie's the only place that isn't going to get a lockdown. If I can see that Adelaide lockdown, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to celebrate. Adelaide and Perth, if I can get those in after my shows, of course, I'll be stoked. Just so that I can be right. This is what COVID's done to all of us. Every single state is looking at the other states just looking for reasons why theirs is better. Sorry, they're not in lockdown. They're in stage two lockdown. Oh, what's stage two? I think it's just like... um capacity limits and oh. uh, not being able to like go to football games and comedy shows. Oh, well, boring. Man, how lucky that I got to do my shows the week before. Yeah. That's so good. I feel very lucky. If that happened like just before we got there, I would be ruined. <laughs> um, but I, but going back, right, a lot of people have been looking at where I'm living and they're going, man, he's living in a castle and I want to move in. It's it's perfect. And look, I've even had this from strangers in the street. I was uh, I was walking around, right? And uh, after the fifth time I bumped into Greeley, uh, a fan came up to me. This woman, rough looking woman, <laughs> not ugly, just rough. You know, she's she has won a few fights, but she's also lost a couple. You know, like one of those, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she comes up to me. And she goes, oh. You live in Tassie? I'm like, yeah. And uh, she goes, oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, where do you live? And I, stupidly forgetting like how small this place is. Because if, you know, when I'm in Victoria, I can go, I live in Frankston. And Frankston's so fucking big. If you go, oh, I live in this suburb in Tassie, they go, all right, so you're in this street or that street. (laughs) So I, you know naively go, I live in this suburb. And she goes, oh, rich cunt. And I'm like, uh, she goes, rich cunt again. I'm like, uh, and then for the third time she goes, rich cunt, angrier. I'm like, huh. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> yes. Thank you for noticing. Or actually I'm ruined because the rent's quite high. <laughs> So what I've decided to say now is the next time someone points out the area that I'm living in, I'm going to say, yes, it's perfect. 
it's better than yours. Ha, ha, ha. You're broke. Don't look at me. And then I'm going to spit on them. <laughs> well, that's just the reality of the situation we're in, Keelan. This okay. is the perfect house. I agree. <clears throat> and to, to further evidence to show you how perfect the house is, so many people are trying to move in. You know, we only have three bedrooms. Upstairs, Keelan's bedroom, Rosie's room. We only have we don't have any room, but every all, all of these creatures keep trying to move in. And recently <laughs> Well, this is just how desirable our location is. Recently, right, we had someone come over to to just address how many roommates we have. <laughs> The, la- the landlord had to send someone over and go, you've got too many roommates. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and I said, I know the house is too small. We can't have any more roommates. I've already got two others. I can't deal with any more roommates. So the landlord had to send over a, uh, over a fucking guy to tell us that we've got too many roommates. And he goes, apparently, we have a severe mice infestation. <laughs> I thought we just had extra roommates. <laughs> Because I noticed that every time I woke up in the morning, there were 50% less cornflakes in the fucking packet. Apparently, the roommates have been eating my food. Shitting in my cupboards. Living in the walls. In the f- coming out of the fucking floor. We have a severe mouse infestation and they're immune to rat sack. They don't fucking die. This sucks. Don't call me a rich cunt. I live with rats. <laughs> Man, it's so fuck. There's mice everywhere. The rat guy comes over and he goes, oh, yeah, they're living in the back of the fridge. I didn't even know you could get in the back of the fridge. He goes, they're in the fridge. They're in the oven. They're in the walls. I'm like, how are they getting in? And he goes, oh, you see that hole in the floor? I go, no. And he goes, right there. I said, no. And he goes, right there. I'm like, oh, that five-cent piece-shaped hole? He goes, yeah, they can get through there. (laughs) I'm like, oh, great. Well, why don't I just go upstairs and jump out the fucking window then? And then I'm like, oh, well, well, that's all right. The landlord's going to sort the problem. He goes, yeah, yeah, but he doesn't want to spend money. So I'm like, oh, well, that's fine. I guess I'll just hang out with all my little roommates and die of the plague. (laughs) Everyone's freaking out about it. There's mice everywhere. We have too many fucking roommates. Every time I go into the kitchen, I feel like there's a rerun of Ratatouille on. (laughs) There's some fucking rat in Keelan's hair forcing him to make porridge. He's like, I can't stop. (laughs) They got into Rosie's protein powder. She's a bodybuilder. And now the mice have tripled in size. (laughs) So fucked. Well, I'm not exaggerating. We have a severe... The guy didn't go... I was expecting the guy to go, oh, yeah, you've got a bit of a mice problem. He goes, you have a severe mouse infestation. I'm infested. I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm going to call the the rental union association. I looked up on the website. I'm Googling like... I'm Googling... Uh, this is how fucked it is to be a renter where I'm Googling shit like... I, am I is am I allowed to complain about having mice? <laughs> like that's how fucked it is to be renting. You're like, am I allowed to be angry that my house is infested with mice, or is or or are they also paying rent? <laughs> you know, I love switching between. Oh, you know, they're just a savvy investor. They've got a real estate portfolio to the minute, you know, I have a fucking drip coming through the roof. I'm like, that's it. Get the pitchforks, behead them. Eat the rich. I'm hungry. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm go- I've gone to the, I, I went, looked up the legal aid and, and I can't believe that I didn't really think this with my own brain. I read the website and they had a, they specifically had a section about like, pest in like situations and they go it is expected to have zero mice in your property i was like oh that's good good news i thought that it would it would say like you can have like six hundred you know dude it's so fun we got a furnished place right because we couldn't obviously move 
everything over. We needed all the furniture to be here. So all of the bowls and all the plates and the cutlery is provided by them. But the cupboards are like full of my mouse shit. So they've been crawling all over the bowls and the cutlery and everything for weeks while we've been using it. And now we can't use any of it. So now I'm like, well, do they need to provide new cutlery? We've had to go out to Kmart and get Tupperware to put – We get, tonight our plan is – to spend two hours washing every single thing that we own and then putting it in a Kmart tub and then putting the Kmart tub, I guess, in Rosie's bed. I assume you're fine with that. She said yes. <laughs> it's so fucked. So, I don't know, suggestions? Any Tasmanians? What to do when you have a severe mice infestation? I'm going to go full uh, renter's rights on this one. I, you know what I really want to do? I want to withhold my rent. I'll, that, that'll make me feel good. I'm not paying rent until you get this problem sorted. Because the rat man came over and he goes, oh, the landlord only wants to do the cheap option. I'm like, oh, oh, cool. So you're going to bait the place. He goes, yeah, we're going to bait the place and we're using this and it's, it's not going to harm the wildlife because we use this strength. So even if the mice die, other things can eat it and they won't die. So that's good. Um... And, uh, and I'm like, oh, cool. So that'll be, that'll be sorted in no time. He goes, oh, about two months. Oh, great. I guess for the next two months, I'll be living with Remy and the boys. <laughs> Just cooking up a storm. <laughs> Black plague, anyone? <laughs> for lunch, we'll have the bubonic plague. And that's the only rat-associated disease that I know of. Tetanus? No. 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 What's the other one? Rabies. I don't know. Rabies. Uh, isn't rabies from other animals? I think any animal can get rabies, I think. Uh, general infection? Mm. Perhaps. <laughs> That's all I know. Sound off in the comments below. Favorite mouse related disease? We could be like that. Movie this part of the hunt. podcast. This, the movie Mouse Hunt? What was that? Really old, obscure movie. Uh, I thought, sorry, I thought you would have got that one. No. You know, we had a little bit of a moment <coughs> this morning where we accidentally thought I was just going to get cancelled for <laughs> because of Keelan. There was a moment <coughs> where I saw my whole career flash before my eyes reading one of the comments or having Keelan read one of the comments to me, right? Because I don't catch all of my comments anymore. I try to read everything that I can, but I got so many platforms, I just don't see everything, right? Uh, and then Keelan reads me a comment about three days after the latest podcast went up and he goes, oh, <laughs> hey, you know that German shepherd photo we've had in every video you've done for the last month? You know, the thing that has maybe one and a half million views, so all up from all the videos we've made from here. I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, apparently <laughs> that's actually a very famous photo that Hitler owned because he was a big fan of German shepherds. And I just saw flash through my brain like controversial comedian and his Nazi dog whistle. <laughs> Radicalizing Australian youth. I thought that you fucking put like a subtle reference to the Nazi empire in the background of my videos. Not on purpose. I've, I, I know you wouldn't do it on purpose, but I also know that it could definitely happen accidentally. I bought it for $2 at Savers. Yeah. Then that, what a great argument that would be. <laughs> When a current affair bashes down my door and then and then once all of the mice leave the house, <laughs> I come out and they go, are you aware that you've had Nazi propaganda in all of your videos for the past month? And I go, I don't know what you're talking about. And then they just show me a picture of my haircut and they go, I think you do. <laughs> and then I go, oh, where'd you get this? You go, oh, $2 from Savers. They'll go, all right. You're lying. Goodbye. <laughs> Terminate account. So anyway, we spend fucking 
like 10 minutes trying to find out this the origin of this photo and hopefully it's just a German shepherd. Apparently Hitler had his own photo that's very similar though. It was a painting from a the painting. 1800s. Okay. Well, that's fine yeah, then. It's a lot different. So the guy who commented was what? just being dumb. Okay. Thank God. Because I was going to say the little swastika here is a little bit strange. I, have you noticed that? The little swastika like, like moan into the grass? That's strange. I don't know why they would do that there. All right. Lastly, I'm going to force upon you a little bit of swim chat. I did 2.4 kilometers. <laughs> Keelan just goes, hey, should you talk about that thing we've been watching? And I said, yes. <laughs> and now we're talking about swimming. Because you know what this show's called? <laughs> Spearhead Sunday's Cunt. We've been swimming. <laughs> we've been swimming. And man, I did 2.4 kilometers. And I'm very proud of myself. We swam for two hours. I almost vomited having dinner. <laughs> Which wasn't the best experience. I'm like, am I vomiting because I swam for two hours or because Remy's had a had his paws in this meal? Perhaps a little bit of both. <laughs> the house is infested. <laughs> a severe mouse infestation is what the guy said. He goes, this is dangerous to your health. And I went, well, great. Lucky I'm paying $600 a week. Fuck. But I swam 2.4 kilometers, which is great. Pretty good. Two hours. And that's all I have to say about that. I've been watching a series called The Act, right? We just, as a little family activity, what's happened? Okay, sorry. The, one, of the, one of the lights of the icons is really bright compared to the others. I noticed that. And I thought it's not, it wasn't playing. I just thought that maybe the whole time the Luke and Lewis intro had been playing something yeah. in the back. Yeah, you would, if that did happen, you would probably would have been fed to the rats. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't though, it just looks like it. Keep going. You couldn't sleep last night. No, I couldn't. Why is that? Because <laughs> of the sound of the rats running around. You could hear rats in the walls. Yeah. The other night, or well, the other morning I came out and was like... <sighs> <clears throat> were you downstairs last night doing stuff? And you said no. Mm. And that the sound I heard was just Remy and his friends hanging out in the house. Just rummaging through our food. <laughs> yeah. We have thrown out a week's worth of food <laughs> twice now. <laughs> it's so fucked. Yeah. You know what I've noticed though about the mice that amuses me is that even they won't touch your Sult- Sultana brand. What's wrong with Sultana brand? They would rather eat fucking Rosie's vegan protein powder. Nothing is wrong with Sultana brand. It's yummy. Mate, mice won't even eat it. I'll leave a bowl out tonight. I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> Don't feed them. <laughs> We're trying to get rid of them. Oh, to prove you wrong, I'll feed them. Maybe they'll maybe they'll leave. <laughs> Actually, maybe that's a great idea. Maybe that's all the rat man's doing, just putting out Sultana brand. <laughs> The idea of Sultana bread is good, but it gets all soggy and fucked. That's why I like it. Really? You like, like a soggy, soggy cereal. Sultana brand? Yeah. You are going to be a great old man. <laughs> why? They all, have you noticed all old people eat is soggy stuff? <laughs> Wheat bake, soup, canned fruit, their wife's pussy. <laughs> Just soggy, moldy. <laughs> no surface tension. <laughs> anyway, guys, we've been watching the act <laughs> as a little family, all three of us. We've been watching a, 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 a what is it? A Hulu? Man, there's too many streaming binge. services. Binge. No, we're on binge, but it's a Hulu series. Yeah. Hulu. <laughs> Fuck, do you say that? Hulu. 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 <laughs> We are watching the act, right? And it's a dramatization of real events, which means everything absolutely happened exactly the way that it did. So I didn't know about this at all, but there was a, there was a mother who was, who was like a, a hypochondriac for her child. 
just thought that her child had every disease on the on the planet and then convinced her child that she was really, really sick with shit that she didn't have. The child thought she had leukemia. She thought she couldn't walk. The mum forced her into a wheelchair. She thought she was allergic to sugar, wouldn't let her have sugar. She thought that she couldn't digest food. So her mother put a fucking feeding tube in her and fed her through a tube. This is all true, right? So, and for this child's entire life, they lived in a wheelchair. The mother would shave her head all the time so it looked like she had no hair. They were incredibly malnourished because of the feeding tube thing. Uh, and they got all of these people to like donate money to them to help this incredibly sick child. And they got a free house out of it. They got heaps of money out of it. And this child was like the child of the year and the face of things and was like really famous for being such a brave little girl despite how sick she was. And obviously she's a child, so she probably believed all of it, right? And then at like 18, when the child reaches 18, she finds out that she's actually 22, because her mother lied to her about what her age was to keep her younger longer. And also they kept moving cities because every time doctors would get suspicious, they would just move and get a new bunch of doctors and she would give them the medical history that's all bullshit and they would treat her as if she had that stuff because I guess there's no, there wasn't exactly digital records at the time and they don't communicate too much and maybe it's different in different states. This is America. <clears throat> so this kid thought she was, well, this adult thought she was 17 when she was actually like 21. And then she had her 18th birthday on her 22nd birthday. And then she gets onto the internet by sneaking out and buying a phone. This is what happened in the series. I assume this also happened for real, the internet stuff. She sneaks out, she buys her own phone without her mother's knowledge. She gets on the internet. She gets on a Christian dating website, right? And she meets this boy who is definitely not right in the head, probably some kind of uh, severe mental impairment, very suggestible and very weird, but she's so fucking naive that she doesn't really realize that this guy's maybe not right. And then she manipulates the guy into murdering her mother. And then she runs away with him and they get caught immediately. And it's one of the best series I've ever watched. And I knew all of this stuff before I watched it. It was still fucking awesome. Cause it actually happened. Um, maybe I should have said at the start of all of that spoiler alert. But welcome, we're all here now, fuck you. Okay? Look, if you didn't, if you, if you're angry at me now, I want you to write a comment apologizing and realize that you're an idiot because if you stuck around for more than 15 seconds of this, it's at this point, it's self-harm. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, it's really hot in this fireplace. Ouch. I'm going to keep it there. That's what you did to yourself, all right? So if you're upset about knowing the ending to this, hey, man, you did it to yourself, all right? So anyway, she gets this guy to murder her mother. They premeditate it. And this guy's like not right in the head. So he's like, she like, I maybe accidentally, maybe intentionally manipulated this guy who's not quite right to kill her mother. But she was also kind of a victim because her mother like medically abused her her, her entire life, made her eat through a tube, May can, basically she was in a cult where she thought she had all of these illnesses when she actually didn't, right? And she got this strange man to murder her mother in her house instead of standing up and walking out the door. And that's just hilarious that she was like, the only way out of this is to get this guy who thinks he has multiple personalities and works at a pizza shop to cross state borders on a bus for two days and come and kill my mother with a fishing knife who has, who is very old and has diabetes instead of me going, actually, mum, I'm going for a walk. That's awesome. And now she's in prison. She's going to be in prison for 10 years. He got life no parole, 
which I guess, I don't know if it's justified. It depends how, like, I guess it depends how impaired he is in real life. In the documentary, he came across as quite not right. That guy was a really good actor or the director should be going to prison because you shouldn't employ someone like that. That's not right. <laughs> you know, that's how good the actor was where I was like, man, I don't know if the, if this is ethical to make this guy do all this stuff. Like, does he even know what he's doing? But now this guy is like serving life, no parole. The girl is going to get out in 10 years. She's planning on starting her own family apparently. I guess it might be. When did this come out? Was Last it this year? year? Last year. So she's got nine years left. That's fucking crazy. And I guess it's like who's the actual victim in this whole thing? Seriously, watch it. I'm, we're going to watch the, the full documentary, the real one tonight where they talk to all of the neighbours because all the neighbours obviously believe that this little girl was in a wheelchair and was super sick and everything and, and the house was, was a gift by a charity. So it was like a really magical, really nice community initiative. And then this mother, it turns out, was just manipulating her daughter and abusing her and scamming the world. And the only way this, this girl thought she could escape was by killing her mom. That's crazy. Is that self-defense? I don't know what that is. I guess that's just like an incredibly massive trauma response. Well, she did try and leave <coughs> once and, and she was found. Yeah. So she would have thought that that was her only option. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's it is it's like a cult. I suppose she was in like her a tiny little cult mm. where mum was god and she was just getting like manipulated. It is it is like that beware the outside world type cult where it's like you're not allowed to have any contact and the minute that she does have contact she starts to work out, "Hang on a sec, I'm not actually this is not actually reality. I just thought that it was because it was normal for me." That shit's fucking crazy. So I'm looking forward to watching the documentary tonight. I reckon it's going to be good. Um, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, the main channel video is going to start looking a lot better now. We've got a green screen. We're getting a new light. Uh, so we're not going to be recording uh, videos in this terrible, weird, strange corner that is probably holding about, I don't know, what do you reckon, 50 mice? Underneath these chairs. Um, <laughs> severe mice infestation. Seriously, tips would be appreciated with how to deal with this with the landlord. Um, I don't know if they're bad people or not, or not yet. I haven't reached out because we've only just found out, but I'm, I'm going to go hard on this. So let me know. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the videos that are going to be coming out. And uh, tickets to Adelaide are selling real fast. So are the Perth ones. And we are about to put on... Uh, the Hobart and Launceston shows on sale over the next couple of days. Hopefully next week they'll go on sale and we're looking at around October uh, for those. So uh, stay tuned, loosebeers.com uh, slash gigs and I'll see you at the shows and I hope you have a shit one. Goodbye. Oh, also I forgot there's a Patreon episode up right now where I am talking about something that I haven't talked about publicly because uh, it's it'll come out later. But yeah, um, if you want some juicy goss, it's up right now.